stone the crows. I don't think I've tasted anything that good in such an early round for a very, very, very long time. Your sponge is delightfully light. Your cream is packed full of vanilla. I'm really impressed. Thank you. Stephen only took up cooking four years ago, and it's now an obsession. Food is my life. I mean, I think about food. I try to people not talking about food. It's just all, all I think about. I mean, everything else is sort of a hindrance. Why are you a chef? I'm here because I'd love to get a job in a Michelin-style restaurant, working with, like, uh, guys who have Michelin stars. I'm really, like, uh, I mean, really start at the bottom and see whether I can achieve that goal. How good is this food today going to be? I'm not saying it's Michelin star, but it should be good enough to put me through, that's for sure. Research scientist Louise believes she has a culinary advantage. Having an interest in science makes me interested in all the scientific aspects of food, and ultimately, if you understand the food, you can make it taste a lot better. All those years of study and what you've always dreamed about is being a cook, is that right? It's all one and the same thing. Cooking is creating something and serving it to people to give them joy. Yeah. Science is creating something and helping people. You've only got 20 minutes left. 43-year-old Pam hopes today will take her one step closer to her dream of owning a restaurant in the Yorkshire Dales. The time seems right. My daughter's 14 now, so I feel I have a lot more time to be able to do what I'd like to do, and this really is a passion for me. If you were to have your own restaurant and it was, you know, called Cafe Pam, what style of food would we have in there? I guess I'm traditional, a traditional cook. Cook English food, cook what I know how to cook. Robust, big or refined and beautiful? Both. Will Stephen's obsession with food be reflected in his pan-fried mackerel, peas, potatoes and beans with a citrus dressing? I think you have a very good dish here. Right. I think you've seasoned well. Yeah. I think your choice of ingredients is absolutely right. Not bad, Stephen. I love the flavour of your rich, wonderful, oily mackerel against the sweet peas and the crunch of those beans. Now, young man, Michelin star you aim for. Peel your potatoes, will you? Research scientist Louise has made rhubarb crumble and custard. What brings that alive is the lovely vanilla in the custard. We've got a lovely crunchy top. I think it's very delicious. It is creamy, it is sharp, it is also sweet. That is a nicely, nicely flavoured, good textured crumble and custard. Is rhubarb crumble and custard good enough to get your place in the next round? I really hope so. British food lover Pam has cooked rhubarb upside down cake with vanilla cream and a rhubarb compote. Stone the crows. I don't think I've tasted anything that good in such an early round for a very, very, very long time. Your sponge is delightfully light. Your cream is packed full of vanilla. I'm really impressed. Thank you. Great flavours in equal amounts. The heat and the warmth, that lovely bit of ginger at the back. Yeah, it's very, very good indeed. Glad you like it. Pam, you're cooking tomorrow. Well done. Ravi and Dave, sorry, gentlemen, you're leaving us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stephen, you're staying with us. Well done. Thank you. So, Deborah or Louise? Congratulations, Louise, you get to stay. Sorry, Deborah. <laughs> Happy day. No, I didn't expect to get through, but I'm really, really pleased that I have, and I'm going to try as hard as I can to stay in the competition. I feel fantastic about it. The only thing is, I've got now a lot to live up to. It's always been my dream to actually work in the kitchen, so I can't wait to do it tomorrow. These guys all say they want to be professionals, they want to change their career. Well, let's see how they feel when they come out of their first busy, hot service.